So let's talk about mustering an army of angry Cornate Space Marines with an overview of starting World Eaters in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking World Eaters once more and in this video I thought we'd do a bit of a general overview and talk about starting the faction from a standing start. At time of recording they've just seen really quite a nice model wave release of a whole bunch of brand new kits and I'm sure there's a fair few people out there who are thinking about starting the army anew. In the video we'll talk over why you might want to collect World Eaters in the first place, a few things to plan and think about before you start the faction, some ideas on first purchases and how to assemble the first models, and some thoughts on expanding the army from there. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight into it. First up, why might you want to collect an army of World Eaters in Warhammer 40k? If you're not familiar with their lore, then the World Eaters are blood crazed chaos space marines devoted to corn, and pretty much they're the ultimate and dangerous melee combat. Very few foes can hope to stand against the fear ferocity that is a World Eaters charge. Led by their blood mad Primarch, the Legion descended into Cornate Bloodlust, perhaps led by Angron's hatred towards the Emperor, who admittedly kind of poorly handled the reunification with him during the Great Crusade, getting lots of Angron's followers killed. In battle, the World Eaters make war in brutal shock assault charges, led by their iconic Cornate Berserkers. The Chain Axe is perhaps the signature weapon of the Legion, all the better to decapitate some worthy foes and offer their skulls to corn. Miniatures wise, as mentioned, Games Workshop has recently released a new small range for them at time of recording, and I'd argue that most of the models are really quite nicely done. In terms of unique kits, they've just got the three cornate ones, corn berserkers, their cultist jackals, and the possessed eight bound, and then three character kits in Angron, Khan the Betrayer, and Lord Invocatus. They back this up with a whole ton of slightly more generic Chaos Space Marine kits, but they're absolutely fine to the field, painted in World Eaters colours. Plenty of demon engines, a demon prince, terminators and vehicles. Admittedly, a few of these are slightly on the older side. Things like the Chaos Predators, Land Raiders and Defilers are a little bit older than most. And also bear in mind that at least in the current codex, Games Workshop have locked World Eaters out of a lot of options they could take before. They don't have any rules for things like Chaos Bikers or Raptors, Kind of a shame, as there isn't really any major law reason why they wouldn't have them. Just for a flavour of a few of their kits, at the top left here we have the demonic Lord Invocatus on Juggernaut, bottom left we've got one of the rank and file Corn Berserkers with a plasma pistol and chain axe, top middle we've got the enormous Lord of Skulls Demon Engine, a great big Cornate Super Heavy that the standard Chaos Space Marines can take, but is extra appropriate for the World Eaters. On the bottom right we've got an 8 bound, a Chaos Space Marine that's bound with the souls of 8 blood letters, makes them extra strong, extra angry, and a lot more mutated than normal. And on the top right we have Demon Primarch Angron himself, again a fairly enormous awesome centerpiece for the army, I feel like his model went down pretty well when they unveiled it. They do like their angry people with chain axes, I notice that literally every single one of these models bears a chain axe, I guess the World Eaters are a legion that know what they like. Price wise the World Eaters I'd say are one of the cheaper armies to get on the table in 40k, they're maybe not quite as cheap as things like standard space marines or adeptus custodes. Compared with some armies though, being pretty elite you don't need all that many models on the table to make a complete army, that usually equates with being fairly cheap. A few of their newer miniatures are a bit more on the pricey side though, newer games workshop sculpts tend to cost more. At time of recording their combat patrol box isn't out yet, but when it does release it will help them an awful lot, that one does look like a particularly good value set by games workshop standards. More on that later though. Finally, in terms of gameplay, their current rules at time of recording are in Codex World Eaters. Perhaps a slightly slims down book without quite as many of the options as plenty of other Warhammer 40k codexes right now, but a little bit more simplicity does have its positives as well as negatives. For the army playstyle, it's rather simple, they just like close combat and get into it as fast as possible. When they're there, they tend to generally do some pretty spectacular melee damage. Almost all of their units are remarkably proficient in close combat, though they do have their downsides, neither really being particularly tough or particularly fast compared with other factions in the game. They do have some buffs and tricks that can help them with that, but they do have their weaknesses. Basically, if you want a melee army, then the World Eaters will definitely do that. They won't really do much else very well, though. Otherwise, they've got that fun new Blood Tide mechanic where you kill units to get buffs army-wide. That one's very fun and fluffy, means that your units get pretty scary by the end of the game. And there is an alternate way to play the army within the Codex, focus only on the Demon Engines and unlock the Disciples of the Red Angel Army of Renown. Maybe not quite as strong as generic World Eaters in my opinion, but a different playstyle there if you wanted it. In terms of current power, at time of recording it's maybe a little bit early days to say one way or the other, 
A prediction is probably kind of middling power for Warhammer 40k though. Despite their combat prowess, I will be surprised if they wound up being one of the top factions in the game. Overall though, if you wanted an army of blood mad space marines with chain axes, the world eaters might well be for you. They've got far better miniature support than the factions ever really had in the past, and some very scary combat profiles and rewards for killing things with the blood tithe. If you do decide that you do want to go for World Eaters, you can think about planning an army. Plenty of places that you can do a bit of research to decide whether or not they're for you or not. Perhaps picking up Codex World Eaters might not be the worst idea in the world, though Games Workshop books are a bit on the pricey side. It's £32.50, €42.50 or $55. There will be a few other ways that you can get rules when they update as well. At time of recording, Battlescribe and Warhopedia aren't updated yet, but they will be after the Codex releases. And you can also use Games Workshop's app as well. You could use Tabletop Simulator or Proxying to try the models out. And there's plenty of content here on YouTube. I've made a fair few World Eaters videos myself already, and I'll try and review all of their major units on the channel. There's a ton of guides and content elsewhere though, battle reports, painting guides, and lore in abundance. You might also want to consider checking out a channel called The Red Path as well. They're a fairly dedicated World Eaters one. Finally, there's various social media things as well. I thoroughly recommend the World Eaters Discord server, a really easy place just to ask some basic questions to current collectors, and also any Facebook pages and subreddits for the faction as well. Then, after doing a bit of research, you can think about planning an army in earnest. For army building, you might want to think about what sort of force you want to wind up with. Do you just want a fairly balanced World Eaters force with the various different options on the table? Or do you want to skew your force in one specific way and take an overabundance of one type of unit? In general, the army is going to be very brutal and melee focused, basically whatever you do. You could certainly go heavy either on the new possessed 8-bound Terminators or maybe just a whole bunch of Berserkers and Rhinos if you wanted. And a couple of other options could be to build around that Disciples of the Red Angel formation. Just take a whole bunch of the demonic World Eaters and Angron. Or you could even do a fairly nice allied force with World Eaters as your main army and then a bit of a sideboard of allied corn demons from the Chaos Demons Codex. That's actually really quite usable and strong in current Warhammer 40k, though both the Red Angel formation and allies rules might not necessarily last forever. They are the sort of thing that Games Workshop might change quite a bit with an addition change. Otherwise, you could also think about opting to theme an army around a specific World Eaters warband in the lore. There's a fair bit of content out for them in Chaos Lords who have taken their own violent murderers in one direction or another. After having a short think about those, I'd think about drafting an initial 500 points army list, and maybe then a 2000 point as a target one to roughly aim towards. Obviously, after you get some games in, you could always revise things. At time of recording, the codex isn't exactly fully out yet. If you did want to check out the points and things though, I'll link my World Eaters codex review down in the video description. Then besides gameplay, you could think about planning paint schemes and things. For the most part, the World Eaters tend to be red, though a couple of their warbands use different things, including one that uses their heresy era colour scheme of white and blue. There's a whole ton of good guides as to how to paint World Eaters on YouTube. I'll probably search up a few examples of people painting them and go with something that you like. A first test model to start out on will probably be a Corn Berserker, I think, about a standard and normal model for the army before you go branching out to more. After you've got a rough idea of which way you might be heading with the World Eaters, let's talk about first purchases to get. Perhaps the most obvious place to start would be the Codex, likely early on. Currently the book is £32.50, $55 or €42.50, and it currently does have the full rules to play the faction. Besides any FAQs or addendums Games Workshop might wind up publishing for them, they often publish a two-week FAQ after the book has dropped. Kind of fun that they get their own standalone codex, though I would bear in mind that it might have a bit of a limited shelf life at this point. There are really quite a lot of rumours of Games Workshop releasing 10th edition around about July this year, and there's definitely a non-zero chance that they might well just rescind all the 9th edition codexes and start again with some simple indexes like at the start of 8th, and if that happens, this book could have a spectacularly short shelf life before it goes out of date. A bit of an annoying situation to be in until we know what Games Workshop's doing with 10th edition. I guess the book doesn't have zero value beyond that though. There are things like lore, miniature galleries, and some narrative rules beyond that. And until then, you would generally want the rules for playing the faction in game and having quick reference. Though I must admit, having a potential short shelf life is really quite a big question mark over buying this in the first place which is a kind of annoying for a faction's main army book. Otherwise, for the exciting stuff, we've got first model purchases, and I feel like the kit that most people would want to start with is the Combat Patrol World Eaters box. 
and whether or not that's available depends on when you're watching this video. If you're watching it at time of recording, Games Workshop hasn't announced when it's going to be released yet, though they have shown us all the contents. It looks absolutely great, and we'll take a second look in just a second. It's perhaps more of a case as to whether or not you hold off for this in the meantime until it comes out. Otherwise, with picking up some kits for the faction, I'd probably start off with some standard issue troops. The iconic Corn Berserk is almost always going to be pretty useful in a World Eaters army list. If they aren't, then Games Workshop has kind of failed from a rules point of view. I'll be tempted to pick up some of those first, maybe with an HQ choice or two. Perhaps something like the Juggernaut Lord or Lord Invocatus could be quite good fun, or potentially a Demon Prince, who generally tend to be pretty nice in combat. Otherwise, though, if you just find anything else particularly inspiring in terms of model or gameplay, it's not really the worst choice in the world if you're really motivated to paint it up. I'm sure a lot of people might well be getting anger on himself fairly early. Definitely nothing wrong with that. It might not be the worst idea just to make sure you've worked out a colour scheme as well, though, as usually if you want to paint a model that big, you probably want to try and get it right. As always, with buying Warhammer 40k, it is quite expensive, so worth being aware of the different ways that you can buy miniatures. Direct from Games Workshop is generally the most reliable, but also the most expensive. I'd often be tempted to order things via local gaming stores or online retailers. Usually they tend to give pretty decent discounts compared with Games Workshop on Warhammer miniatures. For example, Element Games linked in the video description below usually gives 10-20% to off Warhammer models. If you are looking to pick up anything within the UK, using that link does help out Allspets Tactics, and I do appreciate you guys using it. Plenty of other alternatives exist though, both within the UK and around the world. Otherwise, on the second hand market, you might be able to find some things at a discount. It's not going to be very common in the short term due to most of the models being new. But if you wanted to scavenge some things like Chaos Rhinos or supporting vehicles, Terminators or Spawn, you might have a bit more luck. Can definitely save a fair bit of time and potentially a fair bit of effort getting the miniatures together, but quality can be variable. And also bear in mind that 3D printing exists as well. There's loads of great alternative sculpts all over the internet for just about every 40k faction. As well as entire models and sculpts, there's plenty of choices for getting certain parts and weapons if you wanted to customise your U miniatures with different heads or something can be a fun alternative to either save money or get an aesthetic twist on the army. Otherwise, if we are going for mainline plastic miniatures, Combat Patrol World Eaters does look absolutely spectacular when it is unleashed. The price will likely be £90, €120 Euros, or $150 unless Games Workshop raises their prices before the time that it comes out. Definitely not impossible, but even if they do, I suspect it's still going to be a very good value box set compared with the rest of the range. In the box sets, you get Lord Invocatus that you can also build as a standard Juggernaut Lord, your standard Chaos Lord on a great big steed of corn, two units of ten corn berserkers, really nice to have a big focus on the actual Chaos Space Marines rather than the cultists, though there are a unit of ten jackals in here as well, the hyperviolent melee cultists with dual chain blades. Roughly in terms of savings, this adds up to around about £140 worth of kit, or around about a 36% discount compared with buying them separately. It's a pretty solid amount compared with standard Games Workshop's offerings, and I feel like it is going to be popular. You get around about 4.6 points per dollar out of the box set, much better than most things that you can buy in 40k. Overall for the contents, I think it's a fairly solid mix of the new units. Games Workshop unleashed 5 plastic kits for the faction, including Angron and the 8 bound besides this. It's really quite nice to get three of them all bundled into one box, and you do get rather a lot of points in the box at 700. This is a sizable chunk towards an army. I feel like you could probably justify getting two of these if you wanted, build one as Lord Invocatus and one as the regular Juggernaut Lord. A couple of units of Jackals don't seem the worst to hold down objectives and things. Admittedly, you might wind up with it being a bit berserker heavy to be fair. Hardly the worst thing in World Eaters, but 40 might be more than you really wanted. I suppose you could always resell one squad if, say, you just wanted 30 of them. Perhaps as a secondary purchase to the box, I might be tempted to pick up a Rhino or two for the Berserkers. They do tend to be a bit fragile when they're on the board, so having something to get them into the fray and protect them just a little bit with its armoured hull is generally a good thing. For people looking to get into the army on the drop, the timing of this one's release is a bit annoying. I think Games Workshop hinted that it could be weeks and months away, not just round the corner. Fingers crossed it's not too far out though, as the box set looks good. Then in terms of getting your first miniatures together, here's just a few starter ideas based on the current rules of the game. Bear in mind that these might change. For building a kit of corn berserkers, there aren't that many options. I uh, would be tempted to take the ones with the bigger two-handed eviscerators. They're really good value for extra 5 points, hitting at strength 8. 
whereas the plasma pistols are a bit underwhelming for the cost, and the icon is kind of okay to access a 3d6 to charge but drop the lowest stratagem. For the jackals, I generally want to keep them cheap, but certainly take that scorn smasher on the dishonors. That one gives him a really big melee punch, and it's kind of cool. For an eight bound kit, I feel like both the exalted and the regular version seem pretty usable, to be honest. There's some advantage to having some units of each on the board rather than just all of one type. The only main war gear option on the squads is their champion weapons. And I'd be tempted to take the dual lacerators on the standard eight bound and the dual chain fists on the exalted one. Finally, for HQ choices, I'd be tempted to build up a first juggernaut lord as Lord Invocatus. He allows that pretty crazy pre game move if Angron's not on the table and his sword ignores invul saves, which is nice. And for a demon prince, my first build would probably be a sword, wings, and that gun cannon on his other hands. The extra AP of the sword's a bit better than the extra strength of the axe, as he already gets loads of strength in world eaters. In any case, after picking up a combat patrol or a few core HQ and troops choices, here are just a few thoughts for expanding the army beyond then. Currently, from initial impressions of the book, I'd say that most of the unique World Eaters stuff seems pretty usable in most lists, and perhaps most of the generic Chaos Space Marine stuff looks just a little bit weak in comparison, besides maybe one or two things. For just a few units that I think work fairly well in game at the moment, Angoran himself certainly puts a big pressure on the enemy. He's got crazy melee damage, isn't enormously easy to take down, and when he dies, you can just respawn him with the Blood Tithe, popping him back up again and having a chance to charge. And even if you don't make it, then the opponent has to absolutely kill him unless they want him to break something else. Really quite fun, and I suspect a fair few people are just going to want to field their shiny new Primarch regardless. The main trade-off is not taking Lord Invocatus' Warlord traits for a massive pre-game move. There's definitely merits to using that and leaving Angron at home though. I think the Demon Prince is strong, quite a nice generic character to put a relic on, seems the strongest of the three. The 8-bound and the Exalted 8-bound might be some of the standout units in the book. They've perhaps got the best melee damage and are pretty fast as well, so can actually catch things in combat okay. Standard Berserkers and Rhinos to transport them into battle are pretty nice. Good melee damage and objective secures are generally helpful. For Jackals, I'd typically keep the unit numbers low. Maybe just cheap units of 10 to hold down objectives. They're not very tough again, but they can counter-attack really quite hard if the enemy does get too close and tries to take a backfield objective with something light. Spawn are very cheap and awesome blood tithe sacrifices. Throw them towards the enemy for their 25 points each, and you're generally going to be in for a good time. Lord Invocatus is pretty awesome as mentioned, pre-game moves and ignores invuls. And World Eaters Terminators might sacrifice a little bit of their raw melee threats for a bit of range shooting and a bit more durability than most. Though the only issue that I might have with Terminators is how long they might be supported. I feel like there's, at least there's a reasonable chance that Games Workshop might come out with some unique Terminators for the faction in 10th. I would just have a little bit of worry that building up massive amounts of Terminators could actually lead to the models being made redundant in 10th. A bit of speculation there might be completely baseless, but armies like Death Guard and Thousand Sons can't fill generic Space Marine Terminators at the moment. In any case, with all that, I'd have a very rough end goal in mind for a 2000 point army list. Buy the units individually or in small chunks and build towards a larger force. And if you wanted to expand beyond the realms of the Codex, you could consider adding in a patrol of Corn Chaos Demons, maybe something like a Herald leading some Bloodletters and Flesh Hounds, they're generally quite efficient. Or for some fairly solid fire support, you could add something like some War Dog Executioners from Codex Chaos Knights, they're pretty handy dreadblades to have around for a bit of shooting in an army that's so dedicated towards melee. Finally, putting that all together, here's just one idea for a relatively strong 2000 point list. This one isn't aiming to be anything too optimal, just built from the combat patrol and then adding in a few of the more obvious good units. I generally argue that most of this is fairly efficient. In the HQ section, we've got Lord Invocatus to give plus 2 inch move to some 8 bound, plus a Demon Prince with sword, wings, the gun and the minus 1 to wound relic, jumping up the board as another scary combat threat. For the troops, we've got 4 units of 5 corn berserkers, each with a big eviscerator, and they all cram into a couple of rhinos to scoot up the board and then hit the enemy very hard in combat. With objectives secured, they might be able to hold some midfield objectives and potentially do actions if they really need to. Then we've got a unit of 10 jackals with the Dishonored getting a skull smasher just in case the enemy get close. Their main purpose is going to be holding down home field objectives. For perhaps the raw infantry hitting power of the list, there's a bunch of 8 bound. Two units of three exalted 8 bound, each with a champion with the dual chain fists. 
small units and can operate a bit more independently as they don't care about buffs, and then two units of four regular eight bound, each with a dual lacerators champion, they can receive boosts from Lord Invocatus and perhaps the Demon Prince and Stratagems. In the fast attack section, there's three individual units of Chaos Spawn, cheap walking blood tithe points, and if they manage to kill some enemy units and capture some objectives before they die, then all well and good. Two rhinos to get the berserkers into battle. Once they disembark, they can be nuisance units or just park on objectives. And because it's awesome, we'll have Angron in here as the Lord of War and the Warlord. Throw him at the enemy and try and break something important. And then repeatedly respawn with the Blood Tithe and force the opponent to kill him all over again. Unless they want to face his ridiculous melee profile. I feel like something like this would be a pretty reasonable base to start aiming for for collecting an army. Obviously not getting everything all in one go. But this would give you a fair amount of the more standard options for the codex in some good numbers, and you could always take more or less of any one option, or add in a few of the things from the last slide, if you wanted to give things your own take. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Any other insights or advice for collecting world eaters are greatly appreciated to help out other players. I'm sure there's a bunch of people looking forward to getting some mighty cornate forces on the board. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I'll have plenty more coming out for the World Eaters, and if you'd like another video to watch in the meantime, I'll link my full Codex review video down in the video description. Finally, if you've been enjoying all the videos on the channel and you'd like to help support, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description as well. Making all the content here on the channel does take an awful lot of time and effort, and if you are enjoying a lot, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.